What's good everybody, this is Robo from Allbark, back with another video, and today I'm bringing you my 2024 March Madness bracket, breaking down every game in the first round, as well as the rest of the bracket game by game. It's the best time of the year in my opinion, or at least the most exciting, as we all get to see our brackets go up in flames starting this Thursday. Before I get into my bracket, I wanted to share my philosophy on it. Obviously, nearly everyone's bracket's gonna be trashed early on. Upsets nobody expected are bound to happen, and some popular upset picks won't come through. I've watched an absurd amount of college basketball this season, honestly, and still get several picks wrong. It really doesn't matter once the crazy stuff starts happening, so I try to just have fun with it while obviously keeping in mind matchups, stats, as well as trends from past years. That's enough of an intro to my picks though, let's go ahead and get started with the first four kicking off Tuesday night. Starting with the first four, it's Wagner and Howard. Wagner has the worst ranked offense in the field of 68, and Howard holds the second worst defense. Led by junior guards Melvin Council and Teron Allen, Wagner plays a really slow paced game clocking at 361st in the country in pace. Howard has 7th year senior Seth Towns in the squad and does have a rebounding advantage, but the majority of their offense comes from the 3 and that is exactly what Wagner excels at limiting defensively. So I think they've got a very slight advantage I'm going to go with Wagner to advance to the round of 64. Colorado State and Virginia combined for one of the lowest game totals I've ever seen in the tournament thanks to slow pace and great defenses. Virginia has a top 10 defense led by lead guard and ACC Defensive Player of the Year Reese Beekman, as well as defensive ace forward Ryan Dunn. But CSU does have a counter weapon and point guard Isaiah Stevens who averages 17 a game and 43% from deep. And senior wing Neat Clifford is an NBA talent as well. Virginia really shouldn't have made it in so I'm going to go with the Rams moving on to Thursday to face Texas. The next 16 seed match is Grambling State and Montana State. Two teams who are near the bottom in both offense and defense in the tournament. Montana State plays fast and Grambling is the exact opposite. So whoever controls the game and can dictate the pace is going to win this one. Neither are taking down Purdue this year but I'll go with Montana State in this one. The last play-in is a crazy one as both Colorado and Boise State deserve to be in the field in my opinion. Boise more so to me. Unfortunately for Boise State, it's a super tough draw. I like this Colorado team a lot with a veteran guard in KJ Simpson as well as experienced bigs with Tristan Da Silva and Eddie Lampkin Jr. And then of course freshman lottery pick Cody Williams. Boise's got some studs as well though with four scores and double figures including Tyson DeJenner averaging 17 a game. Both these teams have been great on both ends this year, but Colorado shoots much better from the field and rebounds just as strong as Boise State, so i like them to move on to face Florida. On to the first round, UConn's going to light up Stetson. Stetson has the worst defense in the entire tournament, and UConn has the number one offense in the country and a near top 10 defense. I see absolutely no chance here with the number of options UConn has from Tristan Newton, Stefan Castle, Cam Spencer, Alex Caravan, and Donovan Klingon. This team has a real shot to go back to back, and they're not going to lose here. FAU Northwestern should be a great game. FAU is looking to replicate their magic from last tournament. Both teams have really similar offensive numbers, but way different styles. This matchup is going to be all about Boo Booey versus Janelle Davis, though. When you get to the tourney, you rely on your guy, and Boo Booey is an absolute machine for Northwestern. They also don't turn the ball over much and shoot really well from deep. I think they handle a below-average FAU defense and move on to face UConn. San Diego State UAB is a game I've seen some people pick as an upset. San Diego State's defense is top 10 in the country as usual, and they've got an experienced squad led by 24-year-old Jaden Ledee. UAB can score the ball and have a great scoring guard in Eric Gaines and another great player in Yaxo Lendeborg who leads them with 14-10. and 10. But I don't think they're at a level strong enough to make up for their defensive deficiencies, and I think the Aztecs hold off on the upset. I'm kind of bummed about the draw Auburn got in this bracket. I really think this is a national title level team under Bruce Pearl, and with a region as low as this, it could be a really tough task for them. But Auburn has a top 10 offense and a top 5 defense. Yale is no slouch, but they won't have an answer for Bruce Pearl's offensive sets and a guy as dominant as Janai Broom. Auburn should win this one pretty comfortably. Before I get into this next game, BYU is under here because they can't play on Sundays, and the three available five seeds play on Sunday if they advance, so they had to be dropped the seed line to accommodate that, that's why they're a six, and as a result, they get Duquesne, who got an undeserving 11 seed, but they're on fire right now, winning the 8-10 tourney, beating Dayton and VCU. One area that could decide this one is with the rate BYU shoots the three, Number two in the country in three-point attempts. If the Cougs have an off-night shooting, Day-Day Grant is a talented enough scorer and could give Duquesne a shot at an upset. But BYU has a lot of strong shooters, and i like them to move on to the round of 32. Moorhead State is a pretty strong 14 seed in my opinion, and could give Illinois some trouble as we've seen in the past. But Terrence Shannon Jr. is an absolute monster, putting up 28, 34, and 40 points in his last three to win the Big Ten title. As a team, Illinois has a top-tier offense that runs at a pretty high pace. Moorhead State is a super slow paced team and with Illinois athletes and shooters like Coleman Hawkins and Marcus Damask, I find it really hard to see them not dictating the tempo and eventually running them out of the gym. Drake and Wazoo should make for a really good game. Drake beat Indiana State to get in but their net and Ken Palm ratings are not far behind Washington State's thanks to an unbelievable leader in Tucker DeVries. He's a 6 foot 7 guard who could be a triple double threat. I'm also a fan of freshman wing Kevin Overton for Drake as well. 
On the other side, Miles Rice is one of the better freshman guards in the country for the Cougars, and Jalen Wells has real NBA potential. Them, along with leading scorer Isaac Jones, could have enough to avoid the upset, but I really think this Drake team has the right pieces to make it happen this year, so I'm going to go with Drake. Iowa State won the Big 12 and then got hosed by the committee with a terrible draw. I think they can come out of this first weekend, but Zeke Mayo and William Kyle III make South Dakota State a really tough 15 seed in my opinion. Mayo is an NBA draft prospect, and Kyle should be as well, as he's number two in the country in dunks. They really deserve a better faith in this, but Iowa State has really strong guard play from Keyshawn Gilbert and Taman Lipsy, and they have the top defense in the nation as well. They should be able to advance to round two here. Houston's going to be a popular natty pick this year as they're the number two overall seed and I don't blame anyone as Houston has championship DNA with a great offense and elite defense. They've got a dynamic experienced backcourt with Jamal Shedd and former Baylor Bear LJ Cryer and guard play is so important in March. The only thing that could benefit Longwood is Houston's slow pace but this could be just as bad or worse than UConn Stetson game. I like Houston big in this one. Nebraska A&M is another matchup I'm really excited for but also bummed about as both Nebraska and Texas A&M I had marked down as potential Sweet 16 teams. But this is a tough draw as they face each other for the right to play a defensive gauntlet in Houston. At least we'll get to see Casey Tomanaga versus Wade Taylor. Such an elite guard matchup that should be a lot of fun. I love Tomanaga, but Texas A&M has a massive rebounding advantage in this game, so Nebraska's going to have to be really hot to win this one. They usually are, but Texas A&M can also match that, so give me A&M to win this game. James Madison's another popular upset pick. Terrence Edwards Jr. is a stud, maybe the best player on the floor in this game. Wisconsin is such a tough draw though. They had a rough stretch, but really put it together at the right time for the Big Ten tourney. On the other hand, JMU did beat Michigan State in East Lansing early on in the year, and that 31-3 record is incredible. Matchup-wise, Wisconsin has much more size on the inside, but I do think James Madison has what it takes to win this game despite that, so I'm going to take them here. Next is 4C Duke taking on Vermont. Duke is a great team despite the shaky losses recently and a UNC sweep. Vermont's offense is really slow and probably won't be good enough to keep up against Duke's defense, especially with the way they can score the ball on the other end. Vermont does play a solid defense, but I think an important part of a potential upset is three-point shooting and offensive rebounding, two areas Vermont really struggles in, and Jared McCain just seems like a March guy, so I like Duke to move on here. What a run it was for DJ Burns and NC State in the ACC tourney. They became the second team in history to win five games in five days, joining 2011 UConn. This team isn't Kemba's, but it's hard not to roll with them in this game. Texas Tech's a great team, but while their defense is still good, it's not at the level it's been in the past. And although Pop Isaacs is a great, they don't do anything in particular really well enough for me to see an area they can exploit NC State, who has really found another gear as of late, and is one of the best in the country at avoiding turnovers. I'm going to take NC State to grab the win here. Kentucky's a fun team to watch this year, just loaded with offense at the guard spot, but they have serious defensive issues. Calipari has to figure something out on that end if they want to make a Final Four run, but honestly, this offense is capable of carrying the load. Reed Shepard's one of the most efficient shooters we've seen in a long time, and Rob Dillingham's an electric bucket getter. Antonio Reeves is as well. Oakland has some incredible shooters, including Jack Golke, whose sole job is to knock down threes. They should be able to score and can keep it close, but I don't see a team this talented getting outscored early on, so give me Kentucky. Micah Hanlickton suffered a serious ankle injury in the SEC title game, which could definitely lower Florida's ceiling a bit, although they do have great depth with the bigs. But regardless of who wins the play-in, this is a losable game for Florida. Florida has the guard play to beat just about anyone, but I like either winner to be able to compete in this game. And if it's Colorado, I actually think they've got what it takes to knock Florida off here. They shoot at a high percentage, crash the boards, draw fouls, hit their free throws, and have NBA talent on their roster. Florida has the depth to make a run, but I think it's a tough matchup that ends things in round one. Marquette takes on 15 seed Western Kentucky. The big thing that stands out here is the Hilltoppers leading the country in pace. They go chaotically fast and don't have the offense to match that whatsoever, but when they're hot, it can get scary. Marquette has missed point guard Tyler Kolek pretty badly for a while now, but he should be back for this game, which is a huge addition for a potential run. With one of the best guards in the country, as well as Cam Jones and Oso Igadaro, I think Shaka Smart has more than enough to avoid disaster and picks up a win over Western Kentucky here. On to the Midwest region, Purdue has been upset by a double-digit seed three consecutive tournaments, and maybe later on that could become four, but not in this game whatsoever. They'll face the winner of Grambling State and Montana State, both who are terrible rebounding teams and turn the ball over a ton. Purdue finally has experienced guards around Edie with Braden Smith and Lance Jones. I think this Purdue team could potentially make a run, and it would start with an obvious win in round one. Utah State and TCU should be a pretty fun game. Both teams stack up well. Utah State should probably be a better seed in this, and to make it worse, TCU is a pretty tough squad. I think TCU has the best player on the floor, Emmanuel Miller. With how well rounded they are, they could even give Purdue a scare in round two. Jameer Nelson Jr. is a really nice scorer as well, and as a group, the Frogs play really solid defense. Utah State really struggles to hit threes and make free throws, so I like TCU to move on to Purdue. 
Will Wade is back in the big dance with his McNeese State team sitting at a 30-3 and record. This is such an elite game and an unfortunate one for the loser as I think both these teams could make a deeper run. Shahada Wells is a machine for McNeese and they're fourth in the country in three-point shooting. But Gonzaga can counter that with an elite offense of their own. But they just don't have that go-to guy this season. I think that's very important come March. So I'm going to go with the popular upset pick and I'm taking McNeese State to get it done with an elite shooting night behind Shahada Wells. Sanford's another popular upset pick I've seen around as they're a pretty solid team and Kansas definitely has some issues with depth and rebounding. However, partially skewed as Kevin McCullough missed a lot of time and Hunter Dickinson was out for the Big 12 tourney. Hunter should play in this game for the Jayhawks, which is huge for their chances, but nothing yet on Kevin McCuller. Sanford is legit and can go, ranking 14th in pace and an offense that backs it up, setting 7th in the country in effective field goal percentage. Kansas can't play around in this one, and I think after the Big 12 tourney loss, they'll be locked in, bringing that elite defense of the game to pick up a win. South Carolina and Oregon's a really fun game as well. I really like this Oregon team. They've got a former South Carolina guy in Jermaine Kuznard going up against his former team, and Jackson Shellstad just strikes me as a guy built for March with his shooting ability. South Carolina has a decent defense, led by freshman Colin Murray Boyles, who will have to defend a man on fire in Infali Dante. Dana Altman's a consistent winner in March, and I think this group is playing well enough to continue that here. I like Oregon to win this matchup, and maybe even more. Next is Creighton and Akron. I love this Creighton team. Trey Alexander has very underrated NBA potential. Baylor Shireman does as well, and Ryan Kalkbrenner can take over games in the paint with his size and touch. They play a bit of a slower game at a very high level, and Akron is even slower, which probably plays into Creighton's strengths. A team as consistently efficient as Creighton shouldn't be losing this game. I've got them going on to the round of 32. I think this is a tough draw for Texas no matter what, as despite the fact they shouldn't be here, Virginia is a super annoying team to face. And if Colorado State wins like I picked, Isaiah Stevens is an electric guard. Stevens versus Max Aismas could be a great guard matchup to watch and lead to a back and forth game that goes down to the wire. But I'm not going to bet against Max Aismas in March. If you remember his history at Oral Roberts, I like Texas to advance to the next round. St. Peter's is back in the tourney, coming in on fire with a recent history of upsets, so Tennessee needs to be ready to go. Lucky for them, they've got Dalton Connect, who's a National Player of the Year candidate, just such a gifted scorer who can consistently put up 30 a night. If Tennessee wants to go deep, though, they have to find more from the rest of the team. Too often this year is Connect putting up nearly half the team's scoring production. Zakai Ziegler does have tourney DNA, though, and is actually facing his half-brother Armani in this game. I'm going to take Tennessee and their top five defense to avoid disaster and move on to Texas. Now to the last region, starting with one seed, North Carolina. They may be a bit overrated, not completely worthy of the one, but they're still a top six-ish team in the country, in my opinion, and have the roster to bring home a title. They're an old team with a really strong defense and play a pretty fast-paced game led by senior guard R.J. Davis and, of course, big man Armando Baycott. No matter who wins the play-in between Howard and Wagner, it's a huge mishmash game that North Carolina shouldn't have any issues with. Next is a great matchup between the two MSUs. Josh Hubbard of Mississippi State versus Tyson Walker of Michigan State. This is a toss-up game in my opinion. A lot of people will talk about Izzo's tourney history, but when talking about the actual game, if Hubbard and Michigan State get hot, it's good night for the Spartans. Michigan State struggles to rebound, but they do have a pretty strong defense and good guard depth, so I like them to be able to limit the dogs enough to advance here. St. Mary's and Grand Canyon is a matchup I really struggle to pick. Ty and Grant Foster is so, so good for GCU and a genuine NBA talent. I really like Grand Canyon's chance at winning a game or two in the tourney, but this draw in round one is going to make it really tough. The winner of this game could honestly beat both Bama and Charleston. St. Mary's is arguably the best rebounding team in the entire country, but Grand Canyon has a size all over the floor to counter that and does a great job at drawing fouls. This game's going to come down to Grand Canyon forcing the bigs into foul trouble. I think they do just that and it's enough to pull off the upset. Alabama is as lopsided of a team as you can really get with one of the nation's best offenses led by point guard Mark Sears and a defense ranking towards the bottom of the entire power six. Lucky for them, Charleston is built the same way and not as good as Alabama. It would take a really poor shooting night for Alabama to lose this game. And yes, it's very possible, but not super probable in my opinion, which is why I've got Alabama moving on to the round of 32. Clemson, New Mexico could be a really solid game with a big time upset threat, which actually wouldn't technically be an upset considering New Mexico is actually favored in this one. In NCAA tournament history, 11 seed favorites are 10 and one straight up and nine of them have won by double digits. I think PJ Hall is a very good player and Clemson has shooters, but this New Mexico defense is very active and the guard play between Donovan Dent, Jalen House, and Jamal Mashburn Jr. is incredibly skilled, which should be a big problem for Joe Girard and Chase Hunter. JT Toppin can guard PJ Hall well enough to help New Mexico take over this game in my opinion, and I have them moving on over Clemson. Next up, Baylor is a really tough draw for 14 seed Colgate as Baylor is near the elites in offense and Colgate is one of the worst offenses in the tournament, but both teams run at almost identical paces, which obviously favors Baylor. Jacoby Walter could be an X-factor in this tournament, but Ray J. Dennis is the go-to guard. And Baylor has more than enough weapons to dominate this game, including Eves Misi, who's one of the better offensive rebounders of college basketball. Colgate's going to have a really tough time in this game and will need to be on fire to compete. I just don't see an upset coming in this one. 
On to Dayton and Nevada. This is a very interesting game in my opinion as both teams can match up well with Arizona. I like Dayton for quite a bit of the season, but the way they finish, including the Duquesne loss, have showed some serious weakness. Nevada is a tough opponent and has bigs who can help limit Deron Holmes from taking over this game. And although Dayton shoots it really well, Nevada's Gerard Lucas is the most prolific shooter on the floor. Nevada probably should have been a higher seed and maybe the better team in this matchup. I think they've got this one. The last game of round one is 2 seed Arizona and 15 seed Long Beach State. Long Beach State actually fired their coach prior to the conference tournament, but allowed him to finish the season and he went on to win the whole thing. As a team, Beach plays nearly just as fast as Arizona, but Arizona's offense and defense ranks top 12 in the country. So their only shot in this one is if Caleb Love shoots poorly enough to keep them in the game. I like Love quite a bit, but if his shot is not falling, he does not care, and it could cost him at some point in the tournament. On to the second round, starting with the East, UConn just an absolute wagon. As I mentioned, they've got great depth, elite guard play, great size, and NBA talent all over. Boo Booey is a real hero, but UConn isn't the team he'll be able to knock off in my opinion. Auburn and San Diego State could be good. A Bruce Pearl offense versus an experienced veteran San Diego State defense. Jaden Ladee versus Janai Broom. What a matchup that could be. I like the SEC champs to be able to tap into that offense advantage, considering their defense is just as strong and Auburn will win this game. BYU is very capable of winning this game against Illinois, but Terrence Shannon Jr.'s takeover ability up against a defense that's just a bit above average is what I'm looking at here. TSJ could have them playing deep into March, so give me Illinois. Iowa State and Drake is next. Iowa State's defense, especially at the guard spot, will be very important to slow down Tucker DeVries and Drake. And with that, I think Drake could give them an early scare, but the Cyclones are too hot and too disciplined to not get the win here. Give me Iowa State. Texas A&M is a scary matchup for Houston and a scary matchup for just about anybody. A&M has the makeup of a Cinderella squad with elite backcourt duo of Wade Taylor and Tyrese Ratford, as well as an emerging player like Manny Obasaki. Houston is just so good all around and has the number two defense in the country, as well as guards who can match that level of production. I think Houston gets it done. Duke and James Madison will be close to toss-up game territory for me. JMU defends a three very well, which is a strength of the Blue Devils, so this will need to be a Mark Mitchell and Kyle Filipowski game winning the battle inside. I'll go with Duke surviving this one thanks to that, and with just too much talent and scoring ability. NC State has had a crazy run, but their three-point defense is a serious struggle, and Kentucky is number one in three-point percentage. With shooters like Rob and Reed, I think this is where the NC State run ends. Texas Tech could pose a bigger threat to Kentucky matchup-wise, but I like Kentucky winning regardless of the two. A healthy Marquette team can make a run with the experience and versatility they have, as well as the playmaking all over the floor. Rebounding is their killer issue, and Colorado is great at it, but not as much on the offensive glass, which could be a really important factor in this game. I think Marquette squeaks by here regardless of being Colorado or Florida. Purdue is going to be getting tested here by either Utah State or TCU, but they have an obvious size advantage and should be able to hold off the upset bids and advance to the Sweet 16. A big issue in the past has been an inconsistent guard play, which they have fixed this year, and I think that helps their case. Up next, Kansas taking on McNeese State. Whether this is Gonzaga or McNeese, I think Kansas could struggle here due to their lack of depth, especially if McCuller can't go. They're pretty out of rhythm with all the injuries they dealt with as well, so I see them dropping this one as McNeese forces a lot of turnovers, doesn't foul much at all, and has a go-to bucket getter, all vital pieces of a Cinderella run. Oregon is a scary matchup for Creighton with how well they can space the floor as well as score inside, but the Blue Jays shoot the ball and rebound extremely well, and Oregon doesn't defend the three or crash the boards much. Ryan Kalkbrenner has a ton of size, which would be key on slowing down and folly Dante, so I like Creighton ahead of the Sweet 16. Tennessee and Texas would be a really fun game with Tennessee's Rick Barnes taking on the team he coached for a long time. Connecting Ziegler versus Max Acemas and Tyrese Hunter has the guard matchup makings of a classic game. I lean with Tennessee getting the job done with a strong defensive performance and big game from Dalton Connect. Back to the West, Michigan State has a talent and defense to push North Carolina into a tough game, but I think UNC comes into the tourney with a fire and after that NC State loss, the experience mixed with star power and clear rebounding advantage wins it for them. Next, Alabama and Grand Canyon. Alabama has an offensive edge on both St. Mary's and Grand Canyon, but the poor defense could even that up just like it could with Charleston. Grand Canyon defends the paint really well, forces a bunch of turnovers, and limits their fouls, and it has a size and length to keep them in the game no matter what. I think Alabama goes down to either winner, but in this case it's Grand Canyon moving on to the Sweet 16. Baylor and New Mexico would make for an elite guard matchup. Baylor with crazy guard depth and New Mexico with a three-headed monster in the backcourt. This would be a super fun game to watch. Baylor has to dictate the tempo if they want to win it, with New Mexico having a very opposite style of play. New Mexico can really beat anyone when they're clicking, and they're hot at the right time, where Baylor really isn't. I like them to advance the Sweet 16 with a close win over the Bears. Lastly, Arizona and Nevada can make for a good matchup, as Nevada is another team who can give Arizona a fight. Caleb Love is an elite player, but he needs to be on in this one. Gerard Lucas is a flamethrower, and Keenan Blackshear is a beast who can handle guys like Kashad Johnson on the wing. However, Arizona's depth, talent, and scoring is just too much, and I think they move on to the Sweet 16. UConn and Auburn is a Final Four national championship level matchup we'll probably see in the Sweet 16. 
Unfortunate for the loser of this one, as I think both of these teams are true title contenders. Two great offenses, two great defenses, two fantastic coaches, and completely opposite play styles in terms of pace. This one comes down to who controls the tempo, and I think UConn's size will hold that advantage. Next is Iowa State and Illinois. I love Terrence Shannon Jr., but he might be running into a buzzsaw here, as we just saw Iowa State absolutely obliterate Houston's offense, allowing just 41 points in that game. A defense as strong as this one can find a way to take a player out of a game, or just shut down the rest of the team enough to make it not matter. Give me Iowa State. Up next is Houston and Duke, two top 10 teams in Ken Palm as they both play well on both ends. Houston has the advantage of the guard spot in my opinion, and just play at such a suffocating level of defense. Duke's going to have to be on their best if they want to win this one. I just don't see it. I like Houston to make the Elite Eight. This game I really hope we get to see Marquette and Kentucky could make for an incredible matchup. Kentucky can't defend and Marquette can't rebound, so we could see a super high scoring game in this one. Personally, I think Kentucky's depth will help them outlast Marquette in this matchup, and their shooters will be hot at the right time. Wildcats move on to the Elite Eight. In the Midwest, it's Purdue and McNeese State, a Cinderella up against a Giant and Zach Eady. This matchup could give us a fourth consecutive year Purdue fell to a double digit seed, but unfortunately, I think the size advantage ends up being too much for McNeese this time around. I've got Purdue moving on again. Tennessee and Creighton would make for an elite jersey matchup, let alone the game being played. Tennessee's elite defense against Creighton's elite offense. Something's got to give, and I think this is where Tennessee's lack of scoring outside of Connect can really hurt them. I think Creighton has a squad to make a deep run in this tournament. Next, UNC taking on Grand Canyon. Again, this is where I see a Cinderella run coming to an end. North Carolina is just too deep and too experienced to not be able to go far this March. They play hard and rebound the ball and have guys they can go get a bucket whenever they need it. I think UNC advances to the Elite Eight here. Arizona has so much potential with an elite two-way team, but at some point, I think they'll go down with a poor shooting night against a great group of guards, and New Mexico has exactly that. I love this squad, and I'm going to keep the Cinderella run going. I'll be devastated to get bounced by Clemson, but I'm going to take the Lobos into the Elite Eight. In the East Elite Eight, this is a gauntlet of a bracket for UConn, but I really think they're the best team in the country. Iowa State's defense will keep them in the game no matter what, though, but I do think eventually UConn has enough talent to pull away. Give me UConn to win the East region. This is probably a nightmare matchup for Kentucky. They're going to need to be on fire if they want to win this one. They can outscore just about anybody, but I think as soon as they run into a truly elite defense, they could be in trouble, and Houston has arguably the best defense in the country, except for maybe Iowa State, and a capable offense that can match Kentucky bucket for bucket if they really need to, so Houston wins the South. I do think this Purdue team is structured better, as I've mentioned, but Creighton matches up so well with them, in my opinion, with Ryan Kalkbrenner on ED and Alexander's defensive ability at the guard spot. Trey and Baylor Shireman are why they think they'll win this game. Edie and Kalkbrenner could be a bit of a wash, and I just think Creighton is a better squad overall. Lastly, to the West, I've got my Cinderella squad up against the one seed North Carolina. This is probably where it ends, but call me crazy, I'm taking New Mexico to head to the Final Four. I really like this draw for them, avoiding teams like UConn and Houston who can match the guard play and play elite defense. RJ Davis is a great player, and I like Cadeau, but I'm going bold and putting a Cinderella into the Final Four with the Lobos. UConn is sadly where my Cinderella run ends. New Mexico has thrived in high-pressure situations all year and forces so many turnovers, but UConn has more than enough to repeat as champs, and they can counter what makes New Mexico so good as a team and have a definite size advantage compared to some of the other teams New Mexico would have to face. So give me UConn to head to the national championship game. Next is Houston and Creighton, another game with elite guard play and great defenses, which is so important in March. Houston fits the bill of a championship team, though, with experience, great shooting, strong defense, elite coaching. They've got it all. Give me Houston to avenge the Iowa State loss and head to the chip. UConn and Houston will make for an incredible championship game. It's pretty rare to get to the top two seeds in the championship, which makes me hate this pick, but a bracket's going to be trashed anyways, so why not? And I think UConn's been the best team in the country basically all year long, Houston number two, and will be the first repeat champ since 2008-2009 Florida. This UConn team is too good, too deep, and too well coached, and before they lose a ton to the draft, I think they get another championship. So that's my bracket. As I said, pretty bold, especially this year with the New Mexico pick. I'm going to be devastated when they lose a Clemson round one, but that's just the way it goes. It is what it is. Let me know down in the comments who you think is getting upset in round one, as well as who you've got as the favorite Cinderella picks, as well as who you have in the final four and your national champion. I can't wait to go ahead and get started here soon. That's it for this video, though. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.